Good afternoon, young scientists. My name is Roger Bacon, and I was born in the year 1214. That's the 13th century. And you know what that means? I have traveled 806 years into the future, to the year 2020, on a very special assignment. And you know what that assignment is? It's speaking to you, the young scientists at Emmanuel Christian School. Like many of you, I myself was also born in England, and I went to university in Oxford, this very city. And it's a fine city we live in, isn't it? And as a young man, I was fascinated by science and philosophy. And so that's what I decided to study when I went to university. I was also very interested in theology, getting to know God better. So I studied that too. And you know, when I was about 33 years old, I actually decided to become a Franciscan friar. I was a monk living in a monastery, devoting myself to God. And while I was in the monastery, I enjoyed investigating all sorts of scientific ideas to better understand the world around me. These are two things that I absolutely love, getting to know God and getting to know the world around me. And I think the two fit in very well together. When I was a young man, I was very excited as, as a scientist. I even made a list of things I wanted to invent, and I even tried to make some of them. But beyond that, I thought of things that might be invented someday by someone else. Things like steamships and eyeglasses and microscopes and telescopes. Do you know that I thought that one day these things might be created? And they were. But one thing I invented myself was one of my proudest moments as a scientist. And that's when I invented the magnifying glass. This wonderful little device allowed me to look even closer at the world around me and rejoice in God's creation. Science has always fascinated me. Some of the books I enjoyed the most were those written by Aristotle. You may have heard of him. He lived even hundreds of years before me. And yet people today in 2020, in your day, are still talking about him. Now, As I read Aristotle, I saw that he thought you could understand the world around you just by thinking. He said you could just sit on a chair and wonder about things and develop theories and think. Now I think that's important, but as I studied science more myself, I came to realize that I disagreed with Aristotle. Science was much more than just thinking and theorizing. In order to really understand the world, I think you need to go outside and observe things. Aristotle had a very large brain, there's no doubt about that, but I think he forgot to use his eyes. Use your eyes and look around you. This can be as simple as looking at a tree in your garden day by day for a few months. And I believe if you look at the ECS website, Mrs. Nesbitt has put online pictures of an oak tree in the schoolyard to show how it changes over time. Now you might look at a tree in your own garden and make observations to see how it changes. Leaves might come and go. Flowers might appear suddenly one day and be gone just a few days later. This is what scientists call making observations. So to me, science is about two things. And that's the first thing, making observations. Looking carefully at things, noticing details, watching closely. But secondly, and this is the thing I'm really excited about and what we're going to do today, that is experiments. Science is about observation, but it's also about experiments. Taking what you've observed and then asking more questions and then designing experiments to test those questions and find answers to them. And during experiments, you make observations. Now experiments get me really excited and I think at the end of the day science is all about making experiments to find out new things. And the things you can find out by getting your hands dirty and actually doing experiments are things you might not be able to find out just by sitting on your chair and thinking. I wonder if you have pot plants in your house. I wonder if you've watched them grow. Have you ever wondered what makes a plant grow? I think most of you will know that one thing that plants really need to grow well is sunlight. But how did we find out that, that plants needed sun? It was through science and experiments. Imagine doing an experiment yourself. 
Place one pot plant near the window in your house where it receives lots of sunlight during the day. Now take another pot plant and put it in a dark room or even a cupboard with no light in it. Can you predict what might happen? I think you might find that the pot plant that was placed in the sun grows better than that was, that was placed in the dark room. That's what I call an experiment, making observations, recording them. And it's through this kind of experiment that scientists have discovered the various things that plants need to grow. Because you might think that the more water you give a plant, the faster it will grow. But actually, if you do an experiment, you will find that yes, if you give a plant more water, it will grow better. But there comes a point where if you give it too much water, it will stop growing altogether. The plant will drown. This might not be something that you expected. And by doing experiments, we can find out things that our thinking on its own may not show us. I love experiments because when we do them, we get the opportunity to experience science for ourselves. We can measure and record what we discover. And very often, this leads us to ask very interesting questions. Why don't we do a simple experiment together right now ourselves to see and apply these two important principles of observation and experiment. This is an experiment that looks at the effect of air resistance on objects of different sizes. Do you know what air resistance is? Air is around us all the time. We might not even see it, but we can often feel it. Try blowing on your hand. Now air resistance is a frictional force that is exerted against a moving object. Simply put, air resistance is how air slows a moving object down. So when you drop a piece of paper, for example, the air will push up against it to try and stop it from falling to the ground. Now in order to do this experiment, we're going to need two or three or four pieces of paper of our own. And you can see over here I have two sheets of paper. What can you observe about these two sheets of paper? They're exactly the same. They weigh the same, they're the same, same shape, the same size, they even both have lines on them. Now, imagine if I dropped these two sheets of paper from the same height. What do you think would happen? What would you see? Go and find two pieces of paper for yourself that are exactly the same size and shape. Now I want you to hold one piece of paper in each hand and lift them both up in front of you to the same height. And then I want you to drop them. I'm not going to drop mine because I want you to drop yours. And then write down what you see. Observe what happens. Which piece of paper do you think will hit the ground first? So what I want you to do right now is pause the video and stop watching and go and do this experiment with the two pieces of paper. Maybe get your brother or sister or mum or dad to help. And then tell someone what you find out. And then come back to watch the rest of this video. So, what happened? I hope you went and did that experiment. Which piece of paper hit the ground first? Did you observe what you expected to see? Now we can take things to the next level with these same two pieces of paper. I'm going to take one of them and fold it in half. It's still exactly the same as the other piece of paper, same weight, same material, except now it's half the size and its shape is a little bit different. Now what would happen if I dropped these two pieces of paper at the same time? Which one would hit the ground first? Have a go with your own sheets of paper at home. I want you to pause the video again, go and fold one of your pieces of paper, hold it up next to the one that's unfolded and drop them both at the same time. Now I'm very excited to find out what you saw in this latest experiment. Did you predict correctly? I wonder which paper hit the ground first. Was it the folded one or the unfolded one? Can you explain why some pieces of paper maybe fell down quicker than others? And what does this teach you about air resistance? What do you think would happen if you folded this piece of paper again? So now that it's just a quarter of the size of the other one and you drop them to the ground again, what would happen? Which one would hit the ground first? This is why I love science. It's 
full of questions. And the great thing is we can answer some of them by doing experiments. But when we do the experiments, we'll have even more questions. Questions about why we observed what we observed. Now by this stage, if you've done a few rounds of the experiments and different folds and so forth, you might be noticing some patterns. And you can keep going with the experiments. You can fold the pieces of paper into more and more pieces. You might even want to scrunch up one of the pieces of paper into a ball. Like this, just a little ball. And observe what happens. Now, for those of you who are really keen, here's an extra challenge. Why don't you get a stopwatch, maybe on a phone, and time this piece of paper, the unfolded one. Let it go and start the stopwatch as soon as you let it go and stop the stopwatch as soon as it hits the ground. Then write down how long it took to hit the ground. It may only be a second or two seconds. And then do the same with the other piece of paper that you fold in half. Measure how long the half folded paper takes. One fold. Do the same with two folds. Measure how long a two fold piece of paper takes and three folds and four folds, each time writing down how long it takes from when you let go of the paper to when it hits the ground. You might want to record your observations or what you see in a table, so each time make sure to write down how long the paper takes. You could even make a graph of your results. On your x-axis you might record the number of folds, whether it's no folds, one fold, two fold, three folds in the paper, and then on your y-axis you might have how long the piece of paper took to get to the ground. And then you can look at the graph, and this will show you how air resistance affects objects of different sizes. So, why don't you go ahead and spend a few more minutes playing around with this experiment and writing down what you see. Curiosity is key. You can test different shapes and sizes. You can even race different pieces of paper against each other, whether it's a scrunched up ball against a three-fold one. Which one will win? And you can time and see. Go and have fun. That's me, Roger Bacon, and I love science, and I hope you do.